I now welcome Anthony Kellner to the news desk. Anthony, the uh, North Bay Trappers were in action this weekend. I heard there were some uh, surprising plays and, and a few questionable calls. Questionable to say the least, Colby. The call for having your stick tip in the puck being over or under the crossbar, you know, it's been a tough one for the refs to call these days. And uh, it, that play proved costly for the North Bay Trappers this weekend. Um, the LA Bobcats came out with a huge win. Uh, let's take, pick it up in the second period now in the highlights. The North Bay, was, North Bay is on the prowl. The puck gets moved over the Bobcat blue line and Trappers forward Jank looking for a pass. Drops it into Samuel Blanchett who beats Thomas short side to make it 1-0. But the Trappers won't be celebrating for long as we now go late in the second period. Puck gets moved into the North Bay end. Pressured by Elliott Lake. Bad clearing pass by Braden Pearl intercepted by Corey Giffel. His shot gets neatly tipped by Cooper Leach past the goaltender with only 11 seconds left. That makes it 1-1 after 40. We'll head into the third period now. North Bay turnover costly, creating a Bobcat 3-on-1 as former trapper Kyle Rowe beats Hummel upstairs to make it 2-1. And with the Bobcats celebrating on the glass, Trapper's coach Tom McCarthy hasn't given up hope. Then we'll kick it to the, on, the trappers, on the Trapper's power play. Um, uh... <laughs> Okay, so this game uh, turned out to be. Uh, so this game hands Elliot Lake only their second win of the season and gives the nationally ranked Trappers their first loss. In local sports, the Trappers played another game last night and were in Sudbury looking to tally a win after their embarrassing loss to Elliott Lake. The Nickel Barons played a hard game but couldn't match up against the North Bay offense. Trapp Trappers easily slid by the Barons 4-1. to one. Now a couple updates on the Major League Baseball playoffs. Game 3 saw the New York Yankees take it late in the ninth inning to hold the Orioles to tie the series two games to two. Up 2-1 two, in the ninth inning and just three outs from a win and 2-1 lead in the best of five series. Closer Jim Johnson gave up a game-tying home run to pinch hitter Raul Ibinez. The game went to extra, extra innings, and nine batters later, uh, was homered again off of Brian Matsus to end the game. The Detroit Tigers were three outs away from heading back to the American League Championship Series. Instead, they're going to have to return to the Oakland Coliseum for a decisive Game 5 after the Athletics manufactured a dramatic nine-inning rally. Seth Smith tied the game with a two-run double and scored the winning run on Coco Criff's two-out single, lifting the A's past the Tigers 4-3. The first postseason game in 79 years for a team based in the city of Washington turned out to be well worth the wait. Pinch hitter Tyler Moore delivered a two-out, two-run single in the top of the eighth inning as the Washington Nationals opened up their National League Division Series against the defending world champion St. Louis Cardinals with a 3-2 come-from-behind win Sunday at Bush Stadium. Cincinnati hasn't won a home playoff game in 17 years, and the Reds attempted to change that last night. Buster Posey scored on a fielding error by Scott Rowland in the 10th inning, and the visiting San Francisco Giants remain alive in the National League Division Series and kept Cincinnati in their 17-year slump. Well, once again, we'll try and stump Colby with our sports trivia question of the day. The trivia question is, when was the last NHL lockout? And a clue for Colby, it happened the year that the Boston Red Sox won the World Series and the New England Patriots won the Super Bowl. Actually, an interesting fact, Colby, is that uh, the, NHL, the last NHL lockout provided each team with a chance of obtaining the first overall pick in the year's draft. Hmm. Well, that's a tough one. And you stumped me on last, last week's, or yesterday's, sorry. Um, but I believe the, uh, the answer to this uh, trivia question is... 2004-2005. Yes, you're exactly right there, Colby. The last NHL lockout was in 04-05. Wow. Well, let's hope the lockout this year doesn't last as long as the one last year. Uh, quite the eventful weekend in sports, though. Uh, thanks, Anthony. Coming up next, uh, we talk to Katie Scott, the educational coordinator for Pride on Campus.
Here with us today is Educational Coordinator Katie Scott, who is the Educational Coordinator for Nipsey and Canada's very own Pride on Campus group. How are you today, Katie? Good, how are you? I'm great, thanks for asking. So can you tell me a little bit about what Pride on Campus is all about? It's hard to put it into a nutshell, but really Pride on Campus is all about supporting and celebrating a diverse community here on campus, in our community, and across Canada. Right on. So how many people would you say are involved in this group? There's actually 150 members on Facebook, but generally with our events, we have a dozen or two that come to most of them. Right on. Um, and how do you advertise for something like this? Um, we try and put out a lot of publicity because our focus is on getting more people involved, especially allies. Um, so we have posters up, we have emails we send out, we send out Facebook, and a lot of it is actually through word of mouth to friends and family. Right on. Um, so what does your position require you to do? Last year as the director of Pride on Campus, so I was really um, at the forefront talking to people, trying to connect with uh, new members. Uh, this year I'm the educational coordinator, um, so we work collaboratively as an executive, but my focus is uh, education and getting information out to the public. Right on. Um, so what do you think the group offers the students? Um, Pride on Campus offers students a lot. I think a lot of students are looking for a more diverse community on campus. It's hard to have that kind of feel on a campus that is so small. So I think Pride on Campus um, does a lot of work that supports all students. Um, we have workshops, we have fun events where people can just socialize, meet new friends. Um, but we also have educational events that are about, um, we have transgender positive workshops to help people get educated and more aware. Um, and other workshops that provide information people aren't usually aware of. Right on. Um, so I saw on the Facebook group that it said that students and non-students were also uh, were available. Sorry, <laughs> they were allowed to join the group. So I was wondering, um, are you guys involved with the community? Um, is Pride Campus involved in the community at all? Yeah, absolutely. Actually, we uh, work with two other gay straight alliances. They're actually high school based. They're high school groups, and we help them facilitate meetings and get their club running and uh, help their students with issues they're going through in terms of uh, family support and that sort of thing. Um, but we also work with community in general. We've got a lot of allies in terms of uh, the health clinic downtown, AIDS committee, and various other groups that support us a lot. And we always welcome community members to become a part of Pride. So um, how long have you, has this group been open how, or even involved in the community as well? Um, we've existed for a lot of years. It's actually been the last year or so that we've um, kind of become more of a public event kind of coordinator than uh, just a student run group because we think um, it's really important to get a sense of community going all across North Bay, just not on our campus or with a select number of friends as it's been in the past couple of years. I agree. It's not just a, a school thing, it could be a, a community thing as well. It's just it's yeah. something that everyone has in common. Um, so can you tell me about some of the events that you guys have hosted in the past? Um, last year, one of our biggest events was One Guy, Five Queers. It's based off MTV's very popular One Girl, Five Gays. And uh, it was just a dialogue workshop, interview style um, event. And basically, they watched as people were interviewing questions on love, sex, and relationships. We got a lot of funny responses. And then people could text in their own questions. And then at the end, we also broke up into a workshop so people could actually get engaged and answer the questions themselves. And it was a lot of fun. Um, we also did free hugs days to get people involved. If they actually didn't want to hug us, we actually gave out free like chocolate hugs from Hershey. <laughs> and uh, we did a couple of workshops, a trans positive workshop. Um, we worked at the high schools and did a few other events, just social events to get people out and get people knowing each other. Yeah, that's the most important part for sure. So I just wanted to know if our school has had any uh, history with harassment for being transgendered or homosexual in the past, and if so, how did you guys overcome it? In general, uh, the school is fairly tolerant. People feel pretty comfortable walking down, like, down the hallways. Of course, there is specific examples where people have faced discrimination or harassment, but generally it's a pretty safe school. We actually have um, transgender students here passing, which means that they don't get recognized as being any different than the gender they present as, which is great because they're just going through their day-to-day -day school life, no different than any other student, which is exactly what we want it to be. But really, it's about a lack of message. At the school, we don't have a lot of rainbow stickers up. We don't have a really great policy on tolerance and acceptance. Um, so generally, it's about us getting out a positive message here. Right on. 
Um, so if you'd like to know more about Pride on Campus, you can always check them out on Facebook. Uh, search Pride on Campus. You can also email them at prideoncampus at gmail.com. Also, if you want to check out any of our previous stories and newscasts, you can visit, uh, visit theclaw.ca. Um, and also, Canada Newsnet is brought to you by the journalism students and the television students here at Canada. Um, that's all for our show today. Have a great day. I'm Melody Bray.